What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today we return to the Eagle Glen Golf Club out in Farwell, Michigan for the back nine of the once a year up north little day trip, golf trip that my dad takes every year with me. This year, my grandpa decided to tag along. We had a great time together. And uh, unfortunately, the score on the front, at least, wasn't so great. We shot a pretty mediocre 42 plus 6. So we're hoping to do better on this back 9 and break 80 with a 37 or less. I'll tell you what, though. The back 9 is a tough 3,353 par 36 with two of the five par 4s stretching over 425 yards. Um, this 10th hole par 4 has water on three of the four sides of the green, so this back nine is definitely very tough. The next hole is a 220 forced carry over a marsh. Out of bounds looming closely on the left, as you guys are going to see in a second. And heading into that hole, I really wanted a par just to kickstart myself a little bit. But the putt just barely slides by. And now right, I got to set myself up for need a this good one here. toughest tee shot on the course. You're going to need a good one here. 552 par 5. 7 over. Can't make another mistake. And I pull it off. What a tee shot. Boom drive. This was 285 down the middle. Merch. Wearing it in future videos and this one. And as you can see, I'm pretty excited after that. Um, decided to get some merchandise from them. Got a little Great shot. quarter zip oh, and silver clutch. pullover. Oh, oh, looked really <laughs> nice. Right Dad's tee shot just right there looked really nice. And uh, me and I were joking. About Dad's how impact old. on the ball made the camera fall over. Yeah. Me from two weeks ago finishing that sentence. All right. Anyways, off to the fairway here after a great tee shot. I hit a great three wood about 235 down the middle of the fairway. There is actually another water hazard um, on the right side of this fairway that you guys are going to see in a second that comes into play on the 12th par 3 green. So, played this hole really well so far, and I get this 60-yard wedge shot to about 3 feet. We've got a chance for a birdie on the handicap hole number 3. I don't know if it's wedge-worthy or not. Let me check. Nope. Just a little bit outside. As you can see there, it's just outside a wedge-worthy distance. Gotta putt this one out. It's for birdie. Gotta get serious about this. So, just a little three-footer here, just showing you guys my routine. Step up to it. Don't take very much time over it. And it's a side pocket birdie. Let's go. Back to six over par. And you can tell that I knew that putt was huge. My grandpa knew it too. And played that hole about as well as it could Another have been Another long played. par 3, 2.16 from the tips. And this time there's water. Oh, wait, there was water in the last one. But we made a five. <laughs> so, as you can see there, I was really nervous about this next par three. 212, water on the right side. Hitting four iron off the tee. I hit it really nice and crisp. Unfortunately, I pushed this one just a little Aww. bit, and it goes into the water hazard. Oh, dang it. 
Not by much, though, but penalty's a penalty. I pushed it! Well, I hit that folks, shot so good, too. Came off the face. Great. Sad. And as you can see there, the ball just trickled into the water hazard about two feet in. So then I drag it out, take my drop right where it bounced, and then took a bounce to the right. So a little chip shot there up to the green for my third. I get it to about seven feet. Pretty makeable little bogey putt here. This two only drop one shot and it drops. That was huge. Another huge putt. I think the theme so far is that I've hit huge putts in the back nine to keep myself in it going into a short par five, 495. And I hit the best tee shot of the day in between the two fairway bunkers where the fairway is the thinnest. So now we have a 207 four iron into a green where you have a lot of space to run this one up. This is handicap hole 13, so one of the easier holes on the course. Definitely looking to take advantage, and I smoke another four iron. I don't know what it is lately, guys, but the four iron has gotten so much better within the last few months. I'll tell you, there were times during the golf season where, you know, could be involved. Yeah, as you can see there, I hit a really nice one there. We're on the green 25 foot putt for Eagle. You guys have never seen an Eagle on this channel before. I had a chance at Highland on the front nine. And I three putt parted. So I was definitely going to take my time with this one. I tried my very best not to hype this up too much. Just tell myself it's like any other putt. You just got to put a nice stroke on it. Commit to your line. And just go. So that's what I did here. Come on back. Boy, it's not turning back. It's not going to be an eagle. But it's much better than my putt at Highland. Tap in birdie just two feet. Why do I keep setting my putter down? Whatever. It goes in. There you go, guys. Birdie on another par five. So we're back to plus six with five holes to go. Need to go one over through the last five. Completely doable. So... Starting out with this 429 par 4, pretty long one. One of the two pretty long ones on this back nine. I hit a pretty good tee shot, though. I only need an 8 iron in. Short. And I didn't take enough club because of the rough. I feel like I'm in Wales. I'm serious. This is awesome. Now you guys can see why this is my favorite course in Michigan. I'm sure there are a few that are better than this, but of the ones I've played, this is definitely the best. Just thought I'd show you guys the scenery here. This course is just an absolute hidden gem. I don't know why more people don't know about this course. Whenever I ask somebody, have you ever played Eagle Glen? They'll always be like, I've never heard of that course before. And then I just get really mad at them because I'm like, dude, you are missing out. So I just missed Wedgeworthy distance on that chip shot. It was a great chip shot, though. So now I only have just a little bit for par, maybe just a little bit outside of three feet. And I miss my first short part of the day. Right when that needed to fall. Right when I needed some breathing room heading into the last four holes. Now instead of just needing to go one over, we need to go even. Yeah. Uh, why do I gotta and with a 463 like par 4 behemoth coming up, it's definitely going to be a cheat clencher, if you know what I mean. So... I do have a little bit of respite here. 
15 and 16 are the two easiest holes on the back nine. They are both par fours that are under 375. So we pipe the drive to start it out. I got to tell you guys, my driver, especially on this back nine, because on the first nine, I had a couple drives where I really messed up. I really snap hooked it. So on this back nine, I really figured it out. I really zoned myself with that driver. And as you can see, it's putting me in position A1 on almost every hole here. Um very very um promising right, with that bad. driver like this was a tough little wedge shot here about 60 yards when i hit it i knew it just needed true sunday like pin it was actually sunday when we played here stuff. but if there were like a tournament this would definitely be the sunday pin on this green right behind that big grass bunker on that little arm of the green that sticks out so then I have this 25-foot oh, chip shot that almost three drops nine. for a three. Oh. And I really wanted to make that one after the miscue on 14. I Here knew it had a chance about three feet away from the hole. But a tap-in par nonetheless, and we're going into the last three holes, seven over par. We pipe another drive. And this time, it's basically a chip shot to the green. If I was playing from the white tee box, I could have driven this green. Like, because the white tees play 302, um, the blue tees play 320. I'd say another 18 yards would have gotten me probably just barely onto the front I of that green. I just can't. So... I have the inability Another to be pretty solid chip shot. Golfing. As you can I see, the in the moment, I was not extremely happy with it. About six feet down this hill here, I barely tapped this putt. Even though it's late in the day and the greens are getting a little bumpy, I barely tapped this putt. Oh. And it slides by. Oh my gosh. Two birdie opportunities that just barely missed the hole. We're talking edge burners. And now we have to head into the last two holes needing to par out. So I just told myself, you're on a roll right now. Two more good holes, that's all you need. But even with that mindset, that pressure lingers in the back of your mind. And sometimes it just throws you off, as you just saw there. A terrible tee shot that barely stayed alive, as you guys are going to see. We have just barely stayed alive on the cart path. And right across from there is the water. Is it fate? Or is it just teasing me? So, I take my relief from the cart path. I actually know how to do it like real professional now. As you can see there, I learned how to do that at States when I had that situation. So, just a few more good shots, guys. You gotta be kidding me. And he just duffed it. I I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. You can see it in my face, guys. That I knew that that was the nail in the coffin. Because 463, birdieing a par for that long. Chances of doing that are less than 1%. So my grandpa came over and he just told me, and that's it. keep your chin up, you can do this. So then I hit a pretty good shot out of that fescue, yeah. just oh. goes into the rough, and then I missed that. Lip out, by the way. No words. No words. 
Okay, you guys, I just realized something. Par gets me 39. Let's do it. So, being three over on the back. Should be good. I knew that a par would get me a 39 sub 40 back nine. That would be something to write home about. So, I really keep myself in this. I really keep myself pumped, as you can see there. I keep myself going, even though I don't want to. Even though I'm devastated at the fact that I let it slip. But, I mean, there's still a chance that I hold this. I've hold out as far as 117 yards away before. Short. Not this time, though, guys. Sorry, guys. About 30 feet short of a 79. That's how close I got. You can see me standing right there. That's how close I was. Oh! Wedge worthy to finish. No, not yet, not yet. Wedge worthy to finish the day. 81 plus 9, 39 back 9. Not much to be upset about. Thanks for watching, everyone. So there you have it, guys. 81 plus 9 finished under double digits over par. This is actually the third straight course vlog, front 9 and back 9 combined, where I've done that. So, yeah, because Rackham was plus 7, Springfield Oaks was plus 9, this was plus 9. So, there you go, guys. Um... I knew, on the other hand, even though I let it slip, that it was a great comeback, that I gave myself a chance. And I know that if I keep doing that, eventually it's going to pay off, like you saw at Rackham. Giving myself those chances to save par without them being ridiculously long putts. Um, I actually... Shot 78 at Rackham that day with no birdies. I went birdie free. It was par worse. Every hole. But I got 12 pars, 5 bogeys, and a double. So it can be done. Today I got 3 birdies. Can you imagine how good that round could have been at Rackham with those 3 birdies? That would have been a 75. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've been waiting to post a course vlog of this course for a long time. It's my favorite course that I've ever played in Michigan. Um, I look forward to the next time that I can make a video here. I look forward to the next time I can play here. The staff is great. Um, they were just the nicest people ever. They love this course every bit as much as I do. I wish I could play here every day for the rest of my life. I really do. Fact is, I live two and a half hours away, and on one hand, that makes me sad that I can't play here more often. But it, on the other hand, it just makes it all the much sweeter every time I get to come here. Eagle Glen, I love you. Eagle Glen staff, I love you. Subscribers, I love you. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.